Transferring wealth successfully starts with asking yourself questions that will give your family a better life now and for generations to come. In this podcast, financial professionals John and Michael from Copper Beach Financial Group guide you through eye-opening questions to help you discover the truth about your wealth. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to The Truth About Wealth with John and Michael Paris of Copper Beach Financial Group. Gentlemen, how are you this morning? Eric, we're doing great. Hello, good sir. My allergies have bothered me a little bit, so I apologize for my sinus sound. It's not good. Yeah, it's not bad. That time of year. I hate it. Eric, I hate it. I know. I know. It's, it's, it, it makes it hard to sleep, right? That's I need more issue. wine. <laughs> what? I need more wine. <laughs> I think we have enough wine right now. I'm just <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, Michael. Eric. How you doing, my friend? I, I'm good? good. I'm good. I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's busy. I, I swear that every time of year is busy, but right now it's really busy. So, yeah. which is, you know, That's good and bad. Pulled yeah. in a lot of different directions. There's a lot of, information out there, a lot of things that people are talking about. I know you guys are going to be addressing some of those things today on the podcast. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. I hope. I, yeah. It's I, we, Michael and I were going back and forth on what we're going to talk about today. And I, and I, and I, I want to apologize ahead of time to, to the listeners because I might get a little bit rough today on my opinions and my view of things that might contradict others, but that's why we do podcasts. It's great dialogue. Might agree, you might disagree. But here, here's what we're starting to see. We're starting to see a lot of stress in the marketplace with our clients. It's different than it used to be. I think we'll all agree that things are way different now than it were even two years ago. Mm-hmm. The inflation factor, the, the uh, oil prices, the uncertainty of the dollar, the global issues, the, the war in Ukraine. People are concerned and they don't know where to go for, to, for help in a lot of cases. And when I have a dialogue with, with some of our families, they're saying things like, my advisors that are representing us other than you guys are not bringing this stuff up. Like the law firms we work with, although very qualified, very good firms, they're not asking us the questions you guys are asking us. Why is that? And the questions that Michael and I are asking today are not necessarily the old questions we used to answer. They're more current questions based on what we think their focus should be in this environment, like the the estate tax changes potentially, and and the green book in Washington. If you people don't know what that is, it's a hit list for the Democrats to change the tax code or or change the estate tax laws. So this green this little green book follows everybody, but we're not sure what, if they're going to pull the trigger on some of the changes. We met with a, a law firm just what three weeks ago, Michael. Yeah, he said he was holding back on making decisions on this family because he wasn't sure if they were going to implement anything in the green book. And Michael and I are looking at each other and saying, well, that's not helpful because <laughs> the clients don't really know what that means. What are you waiting for? Yeah. We, the, these things need to change today where we can make the changes under the current laws. So the risk is if you go forward with a change in your estate uh, planning, and it might change. The laws might change six months from now. Uh, everything we've seen in the past, everything's pretty much been grandfathered when mm-hmm. things have changed. It depends on on the timing of that. So, what risk you want to take? You want you want the risk that it might might you might have to change it, or if you do it today, it had a huge impact on your family generationally, and that's what you're looking for. But if you don't make that change today, and the laws change, you just lost that opportunity. <laughs> so we're starting to see or hear from our clients that uh, their financial advisors, their attorneys, their CPAs, are they, they don't feel they're getting a lot from them. And now that might be just one or two of our clients, but if that's a message you were starting to hear uh, from them, that, that to me tells me there's a message there that anybody's listening to this podcast and you have good advisors and working with you, you, gotta, you have to ask them, you know, help me through this. I, I need to understand be clear what I should do with my portfolios or if I should do anything with my portfolio. For example, I had a client call me the other day. He said, listen, I need to make an investment next year for X amount of dollars. I'm a little nervous about the market. <clears throat> should I go to cash? That was a good question. It was a short-term need for cash over the next year or so. So it makes sense. But because of the last 12-year bull market, he has $150,000 gains in his portfolio that he's going to be taxed on. So it's not only I need cash for this objective. You have to, you have to, if you cash in that account to go to cash, you're going to pay capital gain tax 
on 160, I think it was 148,000 summer program. So, so there's a balance. You have to be careful when you make these decisions. What's the impact of that decision? And I think they're asking for people to help them through that. You know what he said to me? Good point, John. I, I, let's wait and see. I'm not necessarily need it like within the next six months, but let's wait and let's maybe watch over a little bit. So I, I may feel more comfortable with that decision versus losing sleep at night saying, maybe I should go to cash. If you follow me, Eric, I'm just, I'm starting to see a lot of that. I don't know if Michael, I know you've had similar conversations with families. What are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, absolutely. And I think what you just, the story you just brought up, I think reinforces also what you talked about earlier and longtime listeners on our podcast have probably heard us say this a, a good amount over the years, but it really has to, I think a lot to do with what role we take and, and why we think it's such an important one for families, because even that conversation that you just had with that client, uh, dad is, is something that, you know, is, is not made in a vacuum because it incorporates so many different areas of, of the planning of the client and assume that, that client didn't have a copper beach as an example, he would probably go to whoever was managing that portfolio. And that person is going to, I would like to think, have the client's best interest at heart and be able to try to really advise that client on that situation. But more often than not, that advisor or investment advisor is probably not in the best seat to understand how mm -hmm. even that well-meaning advice might impact the other areas like tax wise, right? He might not know what the tax situation is for the client um, apart from just his, his uh, siloed uh, oversight of that portfolio. So it really just, I think reinforces that the role that, that we believe families, all families should have on their team is somebody that's really just more of a somebody just 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 a counselor really at the end of the day a financial counselor somebody that really understands everything that the client has going on and you know not necessarily always have the right answer that moment but at least can see the full picture to be able to i think give a good perspective to the client in terms of making that decision that is hopefully for the best one right because you know that that story you made there's no silver bullet to that it might be not at good, all. it might be a good decision to go to cash even and pay the tax that's part of the dialogue that i think you know families are looking for in terms of you know here's the pro and con of this decision here's the pro and con of of option b and which route do you want to go but at least i think that helps the client make the right decision for them and they understand all the ramifications of that. I think that's what's what's most important. You know, the other thing that we've talked about uh, the last couple podcasts, you know, where I think this role can really provide value is what we talked about. I think it was probably three podcasts ago recorded about sort of what we're seeing in business owners in terms of trying to recruit and retain key talent right. after the pandemic and getting people to come back to the office. And, you know, it's a, it's a big challenge and, and families very often don't have anybody on their team that they could really go to, to have that conversation. And that's really where I think, you know, again, it's such an important role. I mean, we have, I know some advisors uh, that listen to our podcast and, you know, I would say that this is a good message for them in that, you know, you could be that, you could take that role with, with that client in terms of, you know, being more for them. And I think, cause that's what we're seeing families uh, at all levels, whether business owners, ex business owners, employees, executives, whatever the case may be, they're looking for that, that guidance and that counseling. So I, I, I mean, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. I, and Eric, I, I think the, the real answer to this is, and, it, and it's an honest one, I think, Clients don't know what to ask their advisors. Mm -hmm. They don't have the maybe the time, temper, or training to understand what's really going on in the marketplace. They don't even know what questions to ask. So they freeze. So my challenge to anybody that's listening to the podcast and you, and you have an advisor or you have advisors working with you, push back at them. Challenge them. Say, listen, I, I need to have a conference with you. I want to know more about what's going on because this is my retirement we're talking about. I don't want to lose... I don't want to lose my retirement funds because we didn't make a decision on reallocating my assets. So maybe one of the questions all should be asking their financial advisors, especially their investment specialists is are the allocations changed now? Should I do more than stock sponsoring and cash? Should I do have, should I have gold and silver? Should I have alternative investments? Should I have, should I have a real estate investment trust REITs? Should I have a, a private equity position? Should I have a, a pre-public 
company that I can invest into? Should I own private real estate? See, I, I, I keep going with these questions, but I think an average investor that has a decent portfolio doesn't know what questions to ask their advisors. So, so that's one of those challenges I'll push back at you. Do your research, look what's going on in, in the, in not, not listen to media, but, but do your research on these different topics and, and put a series of questions down. You can ask your advisor and challenge them. You pay them. Mm-hmm. Let them work. Let me <laughs> ask you a question. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of still hung up on the, the attorney story that she told at the very beginning. Uh-oh. When it comes to those that are working with professionals, it seems to me that a lot of what could be, uh, as far as what questions they should ask, they, the, the, really the foundational question is if they have a decision to make, they should be asking, what are the pros and cons if we do this? Or what are the pros and cons Correct. if we do this? So going back to the attorney, right. I think we could all agree that at least the three of us and maybe most of the listening audience, why would anybody wait on a politician? Have you met one? Right? I mean, if, if he's waiting on politicians <laughs> right. to make you would decision, think, right? You, you would think. So I, I think in that scenario, the, the client would be best served by saying, okay, what's the worst that could happen if we make the decision and do this now? And then the quote unquote green book changes something. Then it would force the attorney to say, well, you're going to be grandfathered in. So really there's no ramification or you're not, you know, the, the, we don't know if you're going to be grandfathered in. So this possibly could happen or right. for sure you're not going to be. And then we know what's going to happen. So I think that's the baseline question before even gathering all these other questions that they could be asking is make them tell you what the pros and cons are of each one of those routes, like a choose your own adventure from way back mm-hmm. in the day. Yep. Yep. It's, I mean, cause that example is if, if that family didn't have a copper beach that was meeting with the attorney, I'm sure the family would, well, first off, the family is not going to know about the green book at, mm-hmm. at all, unless they really do some detailed research. It's not something that most you know, families are really staying on top of a lot, but if they didn't have a copper beach meeting with the attorney, I don't think the attorney would have brought that up uh, to the client and the client mm-hmm. wouldn't, would be none the wiser. So, you know, and, and yeah. again, just to reinforce what I said a little bit earlier, there is no silver bullet to this. I mean, you know, there could be a situation where, you know, the, the attorney's absolutely right, but at least the client is making that decision and you've communicated to the client what the pros and cons are so that they make an, hopefully an educated decision and that, you know, you can design it in such a way that provides flexibility if that those law changes do occur and it's maybe not in the best interest of the client at that point, then we can shift gears. Again, that's that proactivity type of um, role that we take that I think helps sort of mitigate some of those concerns in this example. Yeah, and let me finish the story. So after that meeting, Michael, and I looked at each other and said, we, we, we need to address this. So we happen to have a meeting with the client <laughs> and we walked them through our conversation with the particular firm. And the client said the same thing Michael just said. Well, I want to know my options. I want to know the negatives and positives of that decision. So he was so concerned that day, he immediately sent an email out to all, all the law firm the, and all the financial advisors, and he called a meeting for tomorrow to make a decision on this stuff. Mm. So by that conversation with that, with that attorney, Michael, I brought that communication back to our client. He understood where we're coming from. He agreed with us and said, I want to get this thing resolved. So again, to Michael's point, if someone doesn't have a Copper Beach champion, that type of a messaging, it, it, you have, you're kind of on your own, but push back at your advisors. If you're not comfortable with something or if you want to learn more about the pros and cons of what you currently have in place versus what you could have in place, you need to address that. I know that's a lot for people to swallow, but I'm concerned about it. I, I'm hearing, I'm seeing this more and more. And I think there's a stress point in the financial services industry that's not a positive one. I think, and again, I apologize to my peer group. I got to be careful when I say this, but I'm being honest. I think people are, are, are very comfortable where their practices are. They do well financially, and they're not necessarily motivated to make dramatic changes. And I'll use the term, they're a little lazy in, in paying attention because it's, too, it's, it's harder than what I currently have. And they're not addressing it. And I think, I think they need to wake up. And, and I had another, I, I shared with you a little while ago, Eric, I had a meeting on my, on my deck at, the, at, the, at my house this past weekend. And a client listens to all our podcasts, which is great. He said, I listen to every one of them. 
and we're having a dialogue. And he said, you know what? I told my advisor, who's a good friend of ours. He's been managing our portfolio for 10 to 15 years. He's a good guy. He, he's done really well by us. His performance has been good. And I, and I addressed it with him. Listen, are you familiar with this trust structure that I heard on a podcast that I listened to? Or I heard about this on this podcast from these guys at Copper Beach. And he says, no, I'm really not familiar with that. I, I do understand a little bit about that, enough to be dangerous, but that's not my focus. And he, and, and he said that to me. So I said, well, what he should have said to you, James, he should have said, listen, if you're listening to this guy's podcast or, the, or Copper Beach's podcast and you're that interested in it, why don't, I, why don't you get on a call with me? And, and these gentlemen from Copper Beach, and let's have a dialogue. If there's something they can offer to help you and work with me, I'd be willing to do that. He didn't say that. Mm-hmm. He said, just not my expertise. And he left it. So I, 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 I pushed back. I said, did you see that, James? He goes, yeah, that, that's a great point, John. He should have said that. So, I'm, I, so I'm, I'm recognizing the fact that if you're not experienced in a certain field, if you're going to help a client, your responsibility from a fiduciary standpoint at certain levels, is to keep that a client educated on things that are occurring, changing right in front of us, and they need to be paying attention to it. And your role should help them discover how they can prove or change or modify what they currently have in place to better their families. That's just my 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 message. I'm, I'm ranting a little bit today, but I'm I'm in that mood. Well, I think <laughs> I think you just added you reinforced your own point at the beginning of of just you know our podcast triggering, you know, this client and prospect in terms of what he should be doing differently than, than what he is doing. And I mean, I look at the amount of information that we're all bombarded with, and I guess you can make an argument. This podcast is, you know, is, is contributing to that. I hope in a positive way, but it makes it more difficult for the average investor, the average person who's, you know, busy running a family or a business to be able to sift through it all. I think we're down dealing not with, how do I get access to information, but how do I filter through just the massive amounts of information and data that I'm inundated with all the time to find a solution that fits for me? And so, you know, that's that collaborative approach that we try to, to foster in our platform because nobody has all the right answers. I, we, you know, we, we don't always have the right answer all the time, or there might be something that a CPA or an attorney brings to the table when we're meeting together with the client that makes a lot of sense. And so, you know, it's, it's not about who has the right answer all the time. It's about trying to build a good structure around a family and collaboratively help them. And we've talked about the wisdom of crowds before, I think a lot on this podcast as being a sort of a tenant that we utilize here as a, as a philosophy. And, and it, makes a lot of sense. So to, to your point that in terms of, you know, that could be a situation where we would work closely with that advisor and educate Absolutely. that advisor on, on how to, you know, maybe think differently about it to help, to help the client. But yeah, to, to your point to not say, well, this is, you know, this is not really something I deal with, <laughs> you know, but, but clients, uh, you know, sometimes as we said, are stuck in the middle trying to figure all that, all that out on their own and stuff. Yeah. By the way, on the deck was my, one of my clients who happened to invite his friend down James and we were having this dialogue. So the client said to James, and it was a very powerful conversation in one aspect. He said, when I hired John and Michael to do our planning, I, I, don't, I don't lose sleep anymore because I know what they've put in place is exactly what I need for my family. Because if I go tomorrow and my wife goes tomorrow, I know Copper Beach is a place to protect my children. They're in place to protect my wife if I go down. So all this is in place. And he said to James, he said, this is what you should be focusing on. Not necessarily how your investment portfolio is going, but what does that all mean to the next step in life when someone passes away or someone needs to retire or something son happens to both pa- parents? What happens to the kids? What's in place to protect the family? And that's how this guy, Jim, was looking at it. He said, Copper Beach is protecting the family. It's not wasn't he's invested my portfolio better or he built a better trust than the last guy did. It's he's looking at the Copper Beach story, which you you know, Eric, is that we're we're a family CFO and cli- clients hire us to do the important things we think, which is protecting their families generationally. And that and that's the conversation we had. And, and, and James was I mean, he loves our podcast, obviously, and he's learned so much, but he doesn't know where to go. Um, so it's it's one of those um, stress points I see, and I'm I'm trying to be patient with it, but I'm starting to get 
I'm starting to lose my patience because I see a lot of things falling through the cracks with the new families we come across in conversations I have with families that are asking me questions. There's a weakness there that no one's really paying attention to. And I'm just concerned about it. Yeah. I, I, this is going to be a really stupid example, guys. I'm just going to say this out loud, right? Nothing right stupid. Bat, but here's, here's how I see this is that when I go to a restaurant, there's a menu, there's a very specific menu and I order from that menu and I get what I am, I'm ordering. Right. And if I don't know there's anything else that is possible with that chicken that I've ordered, I, I, I won't know. That's what I'm going to get. But TikTok, let me tell you, TikTok's algorithm knows me. It gives me <laughs> so many food videos you wouldn't believe. But what I'm seeing is I'm seeing people cook chicken in ways from all over the world in different ways that I am now saying, you know what? I want to do that or steaks or or anything, bread, whatever it is. I'm seeing all these different options, these different ways that I can do it. The thing is, is I can do those things at home from that very brief video, that very brief bit of knowledge. And that's exactly what you guys are doing with the podcast, except the home user can't do this on their own. And so that's, that there's what draws the difference, but it's TikTok for all the good and bad. It is opening the world to different ways to do things that the like DIYers, again, another example where you see things like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've never known that with a specific tool or a specific method of doing something that's genius. Well, it's because they learned it from somebody else. So when, when people are sharing these podcasts and they're talking about your podcast and your content around, it's going to be light bulb moments for people. And if they have an advisor who's only playing the restaurant part, this is what I've got on my menu, take it or leave it that's it, then that's a problem. If they're not willing to explore and say, Hey, I really like these different spices on my chicken, or I'd really like my chicken cooked a different way. Is that something you can look into if they're just unwilling to change the menu or, or bring in a professional chef, which again, that's you guys to, to do something a little bit different or cook something up. That's going to be better for the client. That's a huge problem. Well, I think I think the latter of what you just mentioned, that example, I think is maybe more analogous to what to what we do, which is, you know, that the chicken example you gave, you know, that that might be absolutely perfect for the client in a, in certain circumstances, mm -hmm. but having somebody sort of overseeing and understanding all of those pieces to be able to say, okay, well, if you want that chicken dish, you need to go over here to that advisor. So it's not that the advisor necessarily is doing. The wrong, that, that I mean, listen, everybody can run their business the way that they want to. If an advisor says, listen, I just want to do this and this is what I'm good at and I really want to be the best at this, that's fine. But be able to work with other advisors to maybe absolutely expand upon what else is out there. Because to your point, it's it's just really, really challenging to be all things to all people all the time. Yeah, real quick, Eric, we are a Michael and I were asked to speak at our broker dealer conference, what about three weeks ago, Michael? Yeah. Three weeks ago. And, and the gentleman that asked us to speak said, listen, what you, what you guys do is is like so unique. I'm going to bring in the top seated folks in our broker dealer, and I'm going to fill a room. I want them to see your process and how you guys operate because they need to understand what you guys are doing versus what they're doing. And and it was an excellent uh, meeting. We had about 85 people in the room, mm -hmm. and the feedback we got back were were was several comments. Uh, we're not even in your stratosphere, John and Michael. We, I don't even know how to get there, number mm -hmm. one. Number two, how do I learn what you guys learned? And, and there isn't anybody teaching this stuff anymore. No. It used to be, not anymore. And one gentleman said, you're the future of this industry, what you guys are doing, because that's where we should be going with all our families, because right. they want more than just manage money. They want someone watching over their wealth. And that's, that's what we have trained ourselves to do over the last 20 years. We're a little ahead of the curve than most, but it's so, it's so obvious that we're different when we speak to our peer group and they're anxious to learn more, but they don't know where to go. And, and we just, there's no training being done. So there's a challenge to the industry. I'm not picking on our industry selfishly to them. It, it the industry's kind of got lazy. They're not teaching what they should be teaching anymore. I don't think I've been around 37 years. I've seen everything across the board and I see weakness in the, in, in all the training that's being done in the financial services industry, maybe not, not the wall street guys, but financial planning in general and, and how you manage families wealth. I think there's a short shortcoming in our industry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the way that 
I was just occurring to me. I had a a, a law school flashback. <laughs> I, I, I try not to have. That's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but the one thing that I remember them teaching us a lot was, you know, it, I call it issue recognition. It's a lot of times you, when you're presented, you're just having a conversation with a client or or a, a prospect or whatever. That you know, sometimes you don't always need to have all of the answers all the time, but just being able to recognize that, hey, this might be an issue. Let me follow back up with that. Is I think such a great skill to have as an advisor now is that I don't necessarily have, or we, I would say, don't always necessarily need to have all the right answers. But hey, maybe that you know something you said triggered this. Maybe mm -hmm. let's bring in the attorney to be able to maybe have a further discussion about that, or an investment advisor, whatever the case is. But just that. Just doing that again, that's more that that counselor type of role, I think can really, really provide a lot of value to a family, just even if nothing amounts to it from that conversation, but at least that you're you're thinking differently in ways that the that the client might not be thinking about themselves. So, you know, again, expanding as an advisor, sort of what role you take or what what topics you cover, even if you're not going to necessarily do all of the nitty-gritty hands-on work. Um, being able to recognize that, I think, just it makes all the difference, really. Yeah, what Michael and I could do successfully, I think, is it. This is what an eighty-fifth podcast, Eric. I think eighty-four, eighty-five. Yeah, account, somewhere in there. In that range. Anybody who's listening to this podcast, just tell everybody about our podcasts. Not because they should be listening to a podcast, but I think the information that we have and we delivered over these eighty-five podcasts can help tremendously. And that one gentleman that says he's listening to our podcast is a perfect example. He listens because he wants to learn. He wants to, but he's not getting it anywhere else. And he said to me, "No one's, ha no one has the topics you guys have." So I'll challenge anybody who's listening to this podcast. Tell everybody about our podcast, not because you want to act be smarter than just that, that's. We think it's a good teaching tool. That's why we do it. That's why we focus on it, because we, we have a message that should be heard only because I think it's needed in, in the industry at this point. Well, Is I, that bragging too much about Copper Beach, Eric? I apologize. If that's no, the case. no, don't that's apologize. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm about to get a little bit more raw than you are. I know that you're a little more politically correct than I am, and that's okay because <laughs> this is your podcast, and then you could fire me if, if something comes up. <laughs> here's the thing is I want to address the audience as well, because um, going back to something you said earlier, when when an advisor is unwilling or doesn't even think about collaborating with somebody else that does something fundamentally different, like what you guys do, I think it's out of fear. And so for you, the listener, I agree. If, yeah. if you are hearing things on this podcast and you bring them up to your advisor and they're like, well, this is not my specialty. And they're not willing to even have that conversation. Ask them, hey, would you be willing to, to bring those guys in on a meeting? And if they're not, ask them why. Just straight out ask them, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you see if this is something that would work well for me? Put them on the spot. And what is, what's their answer going to be? And, and you'll know and you'll be able to tell very quickly by their body language and their response. If they're scared of, of losing a client, they have no idea what Copper Beach really does because you guys come alongside advisors all the time to help a client with their overall picture, not just come in and swoop in to replace advisors. And I, I think that that's a huge fundamental difference that we, that message just needs to get out there. And, and anybody listening to this, that's their, their goal isn't to replace. Yeah, we anybody. don't replace anybody. We yeah. work, we are side by side with all the advisors. I think in the, in the past it's, it's helped strengthen the relationship that yes. that advisor has with the client because we've been, you know, able to work alongside that advisor to help them in areas that they might not be, um, as well versed in. So it just yeah. helps the client and, uh, you know, so the clients recognize that and appreciate that, of course. So, yeah, I would think but, so. Well, gentlemen, I know we're low on time. Is there anything else we need to discuss today or any closing thoughts you have? Don't be afraid to push back at your advisors, get them in the room, ask them questions, say you're concerned about what's going on and you need help. Yep. I would agree. Well, I also agree. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the bosses. But You're I'm, fired, Eric. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll see myself out. All right, you guys, thank you so much. This is a great podcast. I think it's great information. And, and to you listener, you're going to hear me in a second ask you to share this, but I'm going to ask you right now as well. Share this with your peer group. Share these podcasts. This one specifically because this will launch them into being able to investigate all the other podcasts that they have. I mean, like you said, John, I think it's like 85. Tremendous information, tremendous guests. Go back and listen to that stuff. Guys, again, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Eric. You bet. And of course, our last thank you does go to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast with John and Michael Paris. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. 
This way, when John and Michael come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. And I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit different on this podcast I haven't done before, but I'll probably include in my clothes from now on. Please give this podcast five stars, rate it, and give it a review. We have found out that the algorithms that, that bring podcasts to people, those two things, rating it and giving the, you know, a, a five-star review will get this into the ears of other listeners. This will spread the message quicker. So please do that for us. That would be great. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Copper Beach Financial Group, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Copper Beach Financial Group. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. This material is for informational purposes only. Neither APFS nor its representatives provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Please consult your own tax, legal, or accounting professional before making any decisions. Copper Beach is not affiliated with American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Securities offered through American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc., a member of FINRA SIPC, Investment Advisory and Financial Planning Services offered through American Portfolio Advisors, Inc., an SCC Registered Investment Advisor. These opinions are subject to change at any time without notice. Any comments or postings are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute an offer or a recommendation to buy or sell securities or other financial instruments. Readers should conduct their own review and exercise judgment prior to investing. Investments are not guaranteed, involve risk, and may result in a loss of principal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Investments are not suitable for all types of investors. Copper Beach is an unaffiliated entity of American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Any opinion expressed in this forum is not the opinions of American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolio Advisors, Inc. and have not been reviewed by the firm for completeness or accuracy.